PowerPoint is the cornerstone of research dissemination, but did you know you can now use AI tools inside PowerPoint and outside PowerPoint as well to make it far easier and fun to produce? So in this video, I'm going to share with you all of the ways that you can use AI to make your presentations picture perfect. Mwah! Is there anything worse than getting to PowerPoint and going to here and seeing blank presentation and just being like, ugh. This is so annoying, I've got to start from scratch. Well, you can actually go up here and create a presentation from a file. You click here and then Copilot will open up on the side. And then down here you can see create a presentation from. Now, I've led you down this path, but I'm lying to you because this has never worked for me. This is so frustrating. I can't get a file in there and I've tried and tried and tried and people are having the same issue as me online, so it doesn't work like this. So I would love for it to work like this because you can upload a PDF apparently and get something, but I can't do this. So what I've had to do is head over to something like ChatGPT. Over here, I've actually uploaded, say, a PDF or whatever I want to produce a... Um, sort of like presentation on and you can do it with figures and stuff you'll see in a moment stay around so here I've just got created PowerPoint slides for this article and it created a PowerPoint presentation for that article and uh, I opened it and it just wasn't very good so I said you know what add in images and create it in widescreen format because it was a bit rubbish so here it says the presentation couldn't be completed with images because blah 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 and I was like okay well here are the images so I literally went into this file and I snipped out all of the images and I was like put this one you know use this one use this one use this one and uh, yeah I just put those in as you can see six images I said here are the images and this is what it produced for me love that so here are all of the files it actually only produced files like this um, and you can see that the figures are included but the text is kind of like a little bit rubbish so yeah you can get the text and stuff into a format but that's when you have got to start using other tools to look at the kind of like design and other aspects but ultimately all of the important information has been provided to me and then I can do all of the fine tuning and make sure there's not annoying overlap between the figures and the text and all that sort of stuff so a great place to start I just wish I could do it in Copilot. it's just not working for me maybe it'll work for you I have no idea but that's how I would sort of like work at creating that first amount of content and then working on the design afterwards and what can we use for designing? Well, to be honest with you, when you go into um, this presentation and you go like a uh, designer up in this sort of like corner up here, it generates AI designs. But to be honest with you, if you don't have any text in there, it really produces just like generic designs. A lot of these wishy-washy kind of like things. So I found that the best way to use designer is to actually sort of like have text in there and then it kind of like knows what to include for example so let's go to something like this and you know i can go uh here and i can go up to designer and then it will generate design ideas and you can see that you know it's like you know this one's pretty good it's a little bit weird fabrication process oh that one's not too bad um let's have a look this one oh, is a little bit lame but overall you know you can see you can get some layouts with some sort of design stuff included um it's uh good enough i think for just like quick presentations to your phd super Supervisor or so you know that you just want to sort of like display quickly but I wouldn't use these designs if I was using it for like a proper sort of um, research presentation to anyone outside of my research group just because the designs are just a little bit rubbish to be honest um, and so I like to put a little bit more effort into the design of things I mean it's fine like I said for just putting into a quick uh, presentation for a group meeting just chucking together some information but it's lackluster when it comes to actually sort of like presenting really nice information that you want to sort of like impress people with and so I just sort of like go to a couple of places uh, one of them is gamma gamma.app and you can see that I've put in the same PDF that I uh, wanted uh, to sort of like create a presentation on and it sort of like created this nice uh, AI generated outline for me and the problem is is the design is great but the content is rubbish so that's why I like to use chat GPT for the content and then Gamma seems to do much better at this kind of idea of, uh, you know, generating these AI images that support the uh, text. So the 
science in Gamma is a little bit rubbish, but the designs I really like. But to be honest with you, I uh, just steal my designs. If I steal, I mean people give them away for free online and I steal them uh, for free. Is it still stealing? I don't know. <laughs> but I would just go to something like Google or your favorite search engine and just say free templates for PowerPoint and then I just download one. And look, to be honest with you, that's where I got this one and I absolutely love it. It's completely free. You know, you have to work within the constraints of the design, but it's, it's all like editor I really liked it and so this is the talk that I give to research um, institutions and groups when they ask me to talk about artificial intelligence and yeah I absolutely love that so that's how you can sort of like you know perfect the design aspects of your talk but for a quick talk these are absolutely fun oh look at that horrible gradient oh disgusting but nonetheless you want this a little bit bigger because that's what you're mainly going to be talking about. So uh, yeah, overall, you can use the designer inside Microsoft PowerPoint, but it's just a little bit rubbish. So I look for the content and the design outside um, of uh, PowerPoint AI at the moment because the co-pilot is just a little bit rubbish. If you've already got a template that you like working with or your university has provided, you can actually just copy and paste the slides that uh, ChatGPT kind of gives you. Let's just grab all of those. And you can actually just copy and paste it into the uh, file you've already got. Bonk, and then you can use Designer over here. Let's go to Home and let's go to Designer. And you can see that it tries its best to stick with the uh, theme colors and everything like that. So yeah, I think it's a really nice place and you can see it's included these little bits here. So if you have got a design, designer seems to work a little bit better because otherwise you end up with this like hodgepodge, mishmash, uh, horrible sort of like design salad that uh, is just all of these different things. So if you've got something like, um, you know, a, a, a template to work with initially, designer seems to work a little bit better. All right then, that's the design. Let's talk about the content a little bit more. So the one thing I do actually like about Copilot is that it sits here alongside your slide so it can see what you can see which means that overall here if you are looking at this slide and you're like you know what this is a lot of stuff so here I've got reduce the words on this slide and I click go and then it will work on that response for you and uh, the good thing is like I said <laughs> Okay, yeah, look, it always gives me these weird ass, like, uh, sorry, sort of like responses. And I'm like, I just do it. You've done it before. Why are you all buggy and doing this stuff? Okay, provide suggestions to make it more concise. There we are. That's fine. So it says I can't work on the slides directly. Yeah, I get it. Co-pilot. Stop being so weird. All right, then. So this is what it recommends. Um, I sort of like talk about. So it used bullet points, combine information and uh, re remove redundant words. So I can and for example, copy and paste this now across to over here. And, uh, you know, and it can be like a little bit better potentially. So best PCE and then uh, flexible in and then annealing, you know, all of that. It, it's all up to you really to work out what you really like and what you don't like. Um, but ultimately, Copilot is there alongside it. So you don't have to keep on copying and pasting across to a different um, sort of like large language model outside of PowerPoint. So you can create nice succinct slides using something like Copilot going backwards and forwards with it. But uh, yeah, you know, it's a shame Copilot it's just so buggy at the moment, but that's how you can use it in your slides at the moment. All right, so I've saved some of the best features till last because here we have this. If you go up to slideshow and you go rehearse with coach, it is actually something that I think people are not using enough. So you click rehearse with coach and it will send you into this uh, like presentation mode. And then you've got this little thing down here. It says, welcome, see live feedback as you rehearse and then start rehearsing. So you can practice and it will give you feedback and you get an awesome little kind of summary uh, sort of like slide at the end which tells you how you've done. Check this out. So let's go into presentation mode. I'm going to be a rubbish presenter. Hello, welcome to my presentation about my peer-reviewed paper and I will be talking to you about all of the stuff that I did and it, this is how it went. So the challenge is that typically electrodes, and it says here, try speaking a little faster. Okay, I will, I will.
The challenge is the brittle ITO electrodes so that limit the flexibility of the OPV devices. And our goal of the thing was to develop a roll to roll compatible Indian free transparent electrode. And then therefore we used we decided to use silver nanowires and single walled uh, carbon nanotubes uh, instead. The fabrication process that we used was, and then it says here, pitch, try varying your pitch and add an emphasis to your keywords. All right, then I bloody well will. The fabrication process was like this. We took some nanoparticles suspended in a various number of solutions and vacuum filtrated them. And it says here, good pitch variation, keep it up. Yes, I will. And then blah, blah, blah. And so that's where we end up. All right, so we can turn that off and let's escape from there. Donk. And what will happen is this rehearsal report will pop up. And uh, I really think it gives you a nice sort of like indication of where you're at and some nice kind of like uh, AI feedback on your presentation style. So here we've got your rehearsal report summary, fillers, whether I said like uh, 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 a lot, but apparently I didn't. So that's good. Repetitive language, inclusiveness, um, pace, uh, average pace over time. You see it started really low and then it went up and then pitch. Oh, it was a bit monotone. Oh no. And then originality. You avoided reading the slide text aloud. That's good for keeping audience message engaged. So overall, this is a really great way of practicing, especially if you're doing online talks, because uh, yeah, then you can see exactly what the audience is seeing and essentially give you feedback on what the audience is thinking. No one likes to sit through a boring presentation where the monotone voice is just reading the slides. Boring. And the last thing you should know about is this up here on the same slideshow thing. The AI allows us to use subtitles. So you can click this one, always use subtitles. And then when you go into presentation mode, you will see that down the bottom, you will have um, a text and it will give you exactly what you are saying, which means that if you are presenting online or in person, and there are people of um, sort of like uh, English as a second language or hard of hearing, they'll actually be able to see what you're talking about. And I think the, um, the accuracy of this text is really, really great. And it will sort of like keep on kicking it out and keep going, blah, blah, blah. This is my text. There we are. So Love that one. So there we have it. There's all the ways that AI can actually improve your PowerPoint presentation. Let me know in the comments which ones worked for you, what you like doing, because I love hearing about what you do. And also, if you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about how to ruin a presentation like a tenured professor. It's a little bit cheeky, but I think you'll love it.